It's time for some straight talk. The big wireless companies charge a boatload for their superior network coverage. But guess what? Straight talk uses the same cell towers but charges a lot less. Who knew? Well, now you do. And I do. So let's do something. It's time to switch to straight talk. Unlimited plans start as low as 35 bucks a month on America's largest, most dependable networks. Straight Talk Wireless, only at Walmart. Savings may vary. A month equals 30 days. Please refer always to the latest terms and conditions of service at straighttalk.com. I'm told we have found an oven for our feast, so we'll see how this thing goes. We're Mike and Mike. We're presented by Progressive Insurance. Our guests appear on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line, and we do have enough for everybody, including... Ryan Clark, who has made his way into our studio this morning. If you would like a little bit of this pulled pork and ribs, RC, I've got you covered this morning. You probably don't eat pulled pork and ribs, Greeny. I, 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 I will eat them. I and mean, a booger is no, no, refusing no, 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 to no, no, allow no, no, no. me. First of all, people who eat them don't go, ah, I will eat them. Well, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. That's not how it works. It's not my usual 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, nobody eats it at 8 o'clock, but if it's there and it's presented to you, you eat it and you don't stutter about it. He wants to eat it with a fork. And I told him that. Yeah, that's you can't do that. You can't. You got to pick these ribs up, eat yeah, them, and absolutely. whatever sauce is left, what do you do with the sauce? You lick it off your fingers. Here's the problem. Look there is you, no problem. You of all people, Ryan, look how be- fabulous you look. And at all times, <laughs> I know how much care you take in picking out your clothing and all of that. Now, if you got this stuff on your fingers, you can, you know you're going to get some of it on that suit. or on I'm not going to be dressed like this if I'm going to eat pulled pork. We're going to eat it right <laughs> now. It's on its rooms. way. They've taken it to. So here's I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to dress like this. But if you bring it out here, I'm going to figure out a way to yeah. do it, Greeny. All right. You'll so will I. I'm going to get a fork and a knife and I'm going to get no, like, I'm a not, towel. No. I'm never going to eat a fork. Fork it with a fork and a knife. That's not how. It's not how it works. And you're not either, by the way. Just so you know that. All right. That, that, part of the fun is licking it off your fingers. Exactly. Like, that's part of it. Really, there's a perception in America that you're soft. Do you not want to change that? No, no he don't. does not. Absolutely does not. <laughs> And at some point, you have to be comfortable with yourself. And also, yes. the worst part about if Greeny would, is Greeny's going to eat this, his hands are going to taste like hand sanitizer. Oh, wow. That's, that's so a he's huge not going problem. To want, but yeah, he's not going to want to To your point that you have to be comfortable with who you are, I think that's a lie because you've hired this trainer. And you weren't comfortable with how you looked. That's, right. that's the reason you hired a trainer. That's so, why I'm the Mamba now. Okay, but that kind of <laughs> goes against the point of you saying, you know what, I'm going to be who I am. No, you're not, because otherwise you wouldn't have hired a trainer. So you're not comfortable. You want to change the perception. Deep down, you want somebody to look at you and say, yeah, I want to be like that guy. I think lots of people do that anyway. Okay, <laughs> Mike and Mike, Brian Clark is here. Let's get down to business. We've got a couple of things on the table working this morning. We'll work our way ultimately to the Monday night game and everything else, and clearly tons of baseball to talk about. The basketball season begins today, so we are jam-packed. But we're starting with this Aaron Rodgers thing. Mike McCarthy suggested that he did not like the hit from Anthony Barr on Rodgers. There has been others who have suggested they think it is a dirty hit or perhaps at minimum illegal. Booger and I have a little bit of a disagreement on this. I won't prejudice the jury by giving you our opinion. Ryan Clark, what did you think of it? It's a football play, and we're only mad because Aaron Rodgers is hurt, and he's a huge player to not only the Green Bay Packers but to the NFL. Um, It's a play that you see made each and every week, and obviously, and honestly, quarterbacks are hurt more hitting the ground than they are from actual contact from other players, and that's what we saw with Aaron Rodgers, if you're a defensive player, when you go into a game, you say, you know what? We're going to make Aaron Rodgers as uncomfortable as, uh, as, 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 as we can make the game as physical as we can possibly make it for him. And that's what Anthony Barr was doing. The only reason we talk about this hit is because it's Aaron Rodgers and because Aaron Rodgers chose to use uh, a few uh, expletives when he was walking off the field. But the hit is clean. It's part of the game right now. And it's part of what you have to do if you're a defensive player in the NFL. Yeah, and and the thing that I said, RC, is that what would you have him to do? If you don't like that play in football, is there anything else, like as a defender, when you're in that situation and you're going to hit a quarterback – like you don't think about falling on the ground. You think about, you know what, if I'm going to hit this guy, I'm going to land wherever yeah. he lands at. And that's the only thing you think about. I think people out there have this perception that as you're making that run toward Aaron Rodgers, that in your mind you're saying, you know what, I can drive him into the ground and hurt him. <laughs> right, I don't right. Th- like nobody thinks about that. This, this is what I will say about playing defensive football. I've never made a tackle and thought to myself, let me find out the best way to not hurt this guy I'm tackling. Ever in life, I've never gone up to the tackle, whether it's a running back, a quarterback, a wide receiver, and go, oh, my goodness, how can I hit him so it doesn't hurt him? All he's thinking about is finishing the play. All he's thinking about is playing 
through the whistle. All he's thinking about is, hey, how can I affect the game the most on this play? And that's what Anthony Barr was doing. And no time do you make a tackle and you say, what's the best way to hurt his collarbone? Right. First of all, we're not that smart. I'm going to be honest. We're not <laughs> that smart. Most of us are. Speak for yourself. Except for you, mm-hmm. Booger. And, and secondly, when you slow-mo it and when you watch it 18 million times, as we all have, you can say, oh, maybe he could have stopped on the f- second step. Or maybe he didn't have to drive him into the ground. You know, Booger, it happens so much faster than that on the field. Anthony Barr is playing football. Is it unfortunate that Aaron Rodgers is hurt? Yeah, I hate it too. He's one of the best football players who have ever lived, but it's part of the game. Mike and Mike Ryan Clark is here with the Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. Then let me ask the question this way, because I understand what you're saying, and I don't think it's a dirty hit either. Um, are there ways, and I, 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 almost, I can feel the smirk coming on from both of you <laughs> by my merely asking the question, but let's face it. I mean, I did get one tweet out of the, out of the hundreds of tweets that I'm getting calling me soft and all the rest of that. I did get one you from, soft. Never. I did get one from a guy who said, "Greeny, for what it's worth, the ticket prices for that game Sunday went down $150 because all of a sudden Drew Brees against Aaron Rodgers is one of the most exciting games of the season. And with no disrespect to Brett Huntley, and I wish him nothing but the best, and this is his opportunity. And lots of guys in football, everyone's pointing out Tom Brady only got his chance to play because Bledsoe got hurt. We all understand that." But at the same time, there's only like 10 or 12 of these guys walking the face of planet Earth that we're all excited to watch play. Right. Is there anything we could be doing? A booger making fun of me with, you know, put him in a red jersey and whatever it is. Is there anything we could be doing to help keep them healthy that we aren't already doing? Keep who healthy? The quarterbacks. Uh, heck no. <laughs> I mean, it's like. It's you had to watch yourself there. For yeah, once again, it was, I, almost, I almost got a curse out yeah, of mine. I was so disgusted. Yeah, by that was idea. like. I couldn't. I actually didn't know where you were going with that. And then when you finished, I was disgusted at the fact that I'm on this show right now. No, there's nothing else. And this is the thing. They're going to look into that play. Yeah. They're going to try to figure out a way to not let that happen. And I also agree with you. Now that Brett Huntley, uh, God bless him, he's my frat brother. Mm-hmm. He wore a Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated shirt on TV. I was very Shout excited about noob, that. Noob. Shout out to the noobs. But... He says, he goes, well, Aaron's Aaron, and I'm Brett. He ain't Brett Favre. Right. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you were Brett Favre, we'd be super excited about it. We'd be like, oh, yeah, let's get it. And so that is part of it. But that's also part of football. And Mike McCarthy tried his best to talk about moving on, enjoying his quarterback room, saying he has the guy in Huntley and, and, and Callahan mm-hmm. to continue playing. He's a lie. Because it ain't the same. Everybody's not replaceable. And though it does affect the game, it's what makes the game so great. Because every Sunday you got to get up and play and you got to have guys who are prepared, who work behind guys who are going to be Hall of Famers that can come in and do the job. And so now we're going to see if Brett Hundley can do the job. And if he's great, if he's Dak Prescott, if he's uh, Deshaun Watson, we're we're really excited if he's Jared Goff this year or Carson Wentz, right. you know, now, then we're excited about it. And if he's not those guys, then we realize just how important the stars are in this league. What did you think of Mike McCarthy's reaction to the Colin Kaepernick question after he had already kind of laid out? Did, did you hated think he it. went too far? Absolutely hated it. Absolutely hated it. I thought it was indignant. Uh, I, I thought that he was offended that he was asked the question and I can't speak to what Mike McCarthy thinks because I'm not him. Right. I don't know him. I haven't asked him a question. I haven't talked to him. Right. But I don't think he's the same way if somebody makes the same suggestion about Tony Romo, who's from that area, and who has to play. I think he was indignant and f- disgusted because he was asked about Colin Kaepernick. And I'm not saying it's because of Colin Kaepernick's race, because of Colin Kaepernick's stand per se but because he is who he is and he's the lightning rod for what he's the lightning rod for and i hated it i'll be honest i have a uh a very bad taste in my mouth when mike mccarthy is brought up from now until forever because of the way he reacted to that question well here's what i say to that question because Rennie and i had a different opinion i i took it as if i came out in the question before 
And I, I was asked about my quarterback room. And I said, my quarterback room, we're good with Brett Hundley and Joe Callahan. We're good. So I'm letting you know right now, everybody in the room, we're good. And then the very next question, a reporter asked him about Colin Kaepernick. So I took it as if, here's a coach who just laid out to you his plan. His plan is to stick with the two guys that he have. And the reporter was being a little selfish because anytime there's a quarterback situation on any team, injury not playing well, we automatically go to Colin Kaepernick. Not Tony Romo, not RG3, but we go to Colin Kaepernick because of the divisiveness that his name brings and everything that comes with it by some organization and some media outlet. So I took it as a coach that got frustrated that this reporter was selfish because he had to get the Colin Kaepernick question in and he didn't listen to the coach that says, I'm good with my room. Booger, that happens all the time, though. Like, don't you don't you fall into that foolishness of, oh, the coach, he came out and he said it and he said it straight. No, the reason the question was asked, because it's a good freaking question, because we don't know who Brett Huntley is. We don't know who Callahan, Joe Callahan is, a guy they bought up from practice squad. We do know who Colin Kaepernick is. We do know he's going to a Super Bowl. We do know he's going to another a, uh, NFC championship. Mm-hmm. We do know he can run the ball. We do know he has 16 touchdowns to four interceptions. We know these things. Mm-hmm. We know that he deserves to be quarterbacking in his league. We also know that now Aaron Rodgers is out for an extended period of time. And though he answered the question, guess what? Your job is to answer stupid questions. The same way we were upset and mad at Cam Newton for saying, you know what? It's funny to hear a woman talking about routes. And y'all could get mad at me. To me still, if I'm at my house or if I'm at my gym and a woman talks about routes, it is funny for me to hear. I can say it there, but I can't say it in a press conference. I can't say it on TV or I can't do this and I can't do that. So now we're going to make excuses like, oh, he said it straight. He did this. He did that. And now he's frustrated for answering the question. Your job is to answer the question. That's why you're on the mic. That's why you the head coach. So no, he didn't set it straight. And he's a coach that's frustrated because he was asked a dumb question because the question ain't dumb because Colin Kaepernick is better than those two dudes that sit in that room. Because Colin Kaepernick can help this team win. And so when you're Mike McCarthy and you're indignant and you're disrespectful in the way you approach a a reporter, we should talk about that. We shouldn't give him excuses because that's what we do. If we like you and you've won a Super Bowl and you're a respected person and we feel like you've handled your career the right way, let's make excuses for you. Let's try to figure out why you felt the way you have. If you're Cam Newton and you've been bad at press conferences, if you've been indignant sort of at a Super Bowl press conference after the game, after you lost, then, oh, no, we can't figure out why you're upset or why you behave the way you have. Man, that's bull crap. And don't you get up here and start giving that dude excuses for that well, because it's bull crap. I, I don't want to give him an excuse. What I'm saying is I understand the climate that we're in right now when that name is brought up. Every reporter, like if you if you listen to any press conference, I'm pretty sure that uh, Chuck Pagano has been asked about it also with, with, with what's going on in Indy. I understand what you're saying. My biggest issue, though, is I think the the Colin Kaepernick question was a logical one to ask at some point. I just don't think it was logical to ask right after the coach had come out and said, I agree with you. It was a good question. Should have been asked first. Hey, I understand what you said. What about Colin Kaepernick? But the fact that it was asked right after he told you what his plans was, I understand it's a good question. And coaches are paid to answer every question. I thought it was just a little selfish of the reporter to ask it at that point, Green. Well, yeah, that's, no. your, that's your job. I get that. It's I understand that. It's your job that. to yes. be selfish. It is our job to ask questions we want answer to get things like so we come out right we go we go to production meetings and they give us a narrative they say hey rc this is what we're going to talk about where do you stand on it or they say rc we really want to know about this and it's a lot of times i'm like man shoot i don't talk about that crap but i do because it's the story that matters Mm -hmm. and when jay cutler got the job in miami or before jay cutler got the job in miami i was asked who should be the quarterback of, of the Miami Dolphins when Tannehill got hurt? I said Jay Cutler because Jay Cutler's worked with Adam, Adam Gase. It's the logical decision. Jay Cutler still wants to play. And that was no problem to me. I don't feel like Colin Kaepernick is a question for every job because he doesn't fit every job because he's not the person for every job. 
he could be the person for this job. And Mike McCarthy knows that. And he was he felt a certain way because he walked into the meeting already thinking to himself, I'm going to have to answer a Colin Kaepernick question. So he said, I'm going to do all this and say all this about my room. So I do not have to answer a Colin Kaepernick question. Well, guess what? You had to and you should have answered it. And you were rude and you were loud and you were indignant because you felt disrespected in some way. Hell, we all feel disrespected on that mic. Answer the dang question. And he's dead ass wrong. Let me play the answer for those of you who are hearing this entire conversation and have not heard what it was specifically that McCarthy said. So you're going to hear the question. Um, and as Booger was saying, he had just given a response about how he feels good about his quarterback room with, again, with Brett Hundley and with the guy they elevated. Joe Callahan. Joe Callahan from the practice squad. And so now you'll hear the question and you'll hear McCarthy's response. Would you have any idea of bringing Colin Kaepernick in to compete for that backup job? Did you just listen to that question I just answered? Okay, I got three years invested in Brett Hundley, two years invested in Joe Callahan. The quarterback room is exactly where it needs to be, okay? We're fortunate to have a great quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. We're committed to the path that we're on. We need to play better as a football team. And Brett Hundley, he'll be starting this week, and Joe Callahan will be the backup. So that's that was the response, and it was you hear the tone there um, that Ryan that you're referencing. Here, here's here's my perspective on this. I certainly do believe it is the right question to ask. There is this is a circumstance unlike any other. Um, RG three is not in the league because the league has given up on RG three as a football player, rightly or wrongly. You might and you played with him, so yeah. you could say that he's um, that you might think that he could still play, but clearly. The league has just decided. Thirty-two teams have individually right. decided he can't play anymore. Right. Colin Kaepernick. There's no. There's no argument that he isn't one of. He isn't better than a lot of the people who are still playing. It's clearly obvious to understand why it is that he's not in the league. If I were going to give McCarthy a pass on his tone, it would be as I said earlier this morning. Here's a guy having a bad day. Right. You've just lost your starting quarterback. Your season has just gone down the drain, and everybody knows it. What I heard in his tone is him saying, "Listen." I'm having the worst day I could possibly have, and you're trying to get me to say something that you know is going to get me in trouble. That's what I think he was saying. Should he have done it? No. Should he have responded that way? No. Did I necessarily immediately take it to mean his tone? Am I giving him a pass? Maybe. But the way I heard him talking, it was not talking about Kaepernick as much as he was talking about to the reporter, you're trying to get me to say something that is going to get me in trouble when I already have my hands as full as they can possibly be with the fact that my entire team season just went down the drain. That's what I thought I heard him say. Yeah, but Greeny, so so here's the thing. When I was on NFL Live yesterday and, and they replayed his press conference after the game and he was, you know, we're going to continue playing. Obviously, Aaron's a great player. I said on TV yesterday, you tripping, right? You were acting like there's no reason to panic. There is reason to panic. This is one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game. To me, the best physically that has ever played. And you're acting like it's just another guy going down. So if you can be that calm in the post-game press conference, if you can be that calm before answering that question, then you can be calm enough to say, hey, look, I just told you how we feel about our quarterback room. We aren't going out anywhere to find another quarterback. We are comfortable with the guys we had. Because that is the narrative. So 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 that's the narrative you had yesterday. Right. Right. And the narrative you've had before that question. And so, yeah, I understand he's had a bad day. And I can't say if they ask about any other quarterback in the world next that he would not behave that way. I can't. You are right, Greeny. That may be the way he answers the next question, no matter what's asked. I don't believe it. I'm not going to sit up here and give him a pass. I'm not going to sit up here and say, I believe he would have answered it that way for any other quarterback. But you are correct. If we want to give him excuses, we can. I'm not. It's an interesting question. Now we're getting into an area that we'll never know the answer to. But if you took the word, the name Colin Kaepernick out of that follow-up question and made it Tony Romo, which is something people were talking about, right. would he have responded the same way? In my, in my personal opinion, the answer is no. I don't think he would have responded the same way. I think he was responding to the fact that he felt he was that someone was trying to draw him now, into a larger yeah. debate that he didn't want now, to that, Absolutely a setup question. Now, yeah. that I definitely absolutely. agree with you. But in, absolutely. In, in, RC, to your point, 
after the game, there were still questions whether or not this was going to be season-ending, right. surgery. So now he steps to the mic at the press conference. He knows at that point it's surgery required, it's season-ending. Does that change the context at all? I'm, I'm just asking. Heck no. Okay. No. Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Because when Aaron Rodgers is getting carted off, I don't care if he's getting carted off because his fingernail broke. It's an issue to me. I was panicked yesterday. And listen, I hate Aaron Rodgers. We had to talk. <laughs> we talked about it. Yeah. There's nobody I hate more in the world. Remind me again. He did something to you on the yeah, field one so time. He, listen, listen, Green. Super Bowl. Green. Won that Super I Bowl freaking planned on being the Super Bowl MVP. Right. I had to play picked out. I did everything I was supposed to do, Greeny. We supposed to be dancing at the end. My wife is not supposed to have to cry after the game. Huh. My son is not supposed to have to look at me and say, Daddy, what coverage is what y'all playing? Because y'all couldn't stop Aaron Rodgers. Right? right? So here it is, Greeny. I make the play. I make the check. Hey, Ike, check, check, check. I'm gone. Go zero. You cover this tight end. Nobody cares about him. He's going to throw the ball to Greg Jennings because Greg Jennings is at number three. And every time he's at number three, they throw a seam in too deep. So I go. I break, and he freaking throws it over my hand. So the next drive, we have a timeout, and Aaron Rodgers with his stupid little pointer finger and thumb goes, hey, 2-5. I hope they fall off. Love it. Love it. I hope he throws throws the football. I hope he throws the football with three fingers the rest of his life because he don't deserve these two, (laughs) Greeny, because he don't understand the pain that these two fingers have put me through my whole life. I could have two rings, but no. Aaron Rodgers, I want to be all good and make throws people other people can't make. And, yeah, Tom Brady's tall, and he has a, head, a beautiful wife, but he can't throw the ball like me. Freaking hate you, Aaron. But, Green, but get healthy. Greeny, do that? Yeah. I want you to do that? Yeah. It's Hope your be, fingers it's, fall off too, Greeny. Yeah, it's going to be a rib in between there. No, nah, I'm, not, I'm not eating No, seriously, it's right going to be a rib right, right hey, in between that. That was good, Booger. But I think, it is, I think it is just to sort of leave it here on this topic. Uh, it's a really interesting point that you make because – I mean, history is filled with with coaches getting aggravated with questions, and sometimes we love that, right? I mean, sometimes we adore it. And you're right. We do give people passes based upon the circumstances, mm-hmm. based upon who they are, based upon what their history is. And sometimes that's reasonable, too. A person has had nine years of doing things right. well, and then on one Absolutely. day he has a bad day. Right. You give him a pass. I get it. But it, it is an indication more than anything else of how this particular circumstance with Colin Kaepernick has created in everyone and we're having meetings in new york to talk about it today Mm -hmm. emotions that run the entire spectrum different than anything we've ever seen absolutely this is something we've never seen before absolutely and and i so i totally agree with you i don't think he reacts that way if the question is about i can't i don't know this for certain but i don't think he reacts that way if the question is about tony romo or if it's about rg3 or if it's about tim tebow or i couldn't think of anybody else when we brought up tebow earlier this morning anyway ryan clark is here and as as incredibly nice as you look if you would like some like of the barbecue ensemble. you are welcome to have some i do oh, i mean morning barbecue oh, we can put eggs on it it's on his way <laughs> if we could get eggs i'll do my best yeah. <laughs> those we have to eat with a fork and knife anyway delight to see you as always thank hey, you good to see much. you guys man. ryan clark with us hey, here booger stuff. that's a great shirt by oh, the way hey, down 20 zero yeah. come back do what we gotta do. Yeah, nobody's hey, talking about that. Today. Nobody's talking about that. Hey, listen, uh, Coach O, hold that tiger. I want to. I want to turn around so everybody can see what's on the back of the shirt. One team, one heartbeat is what it says on the back. That's what it said of Booger's shirt. If anybody right. saw Booger's Instagram post, he was throwing up the L's very early on Saturday. <laughs> it's what we do. Let's go win another one. Let's go, guys. Hey, everyone, Mike Golick here. Support for the Mike and Mike podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Home isn't just a place, it's a feeling. Whether you're at home, your business, or online, ADT helps keep you safe. With security systems, home automation, alarms, and surveillance. So you can feel at home, wherever you are. Go to ADT.com to get that feeling. ADT, home, safe home. I'm looking at some of the Twitter reaction to the discussion we just had with Ryan Clark, which I thought was excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and these are the best conversations. These are consecutive tweets. 
Uh, Clarence tweets, real Clark is 100 percent correct. Um, and uh, Tiffany Wilson, again, these two came in both 11 minutes ago, so literally consecutively. Tiffany says, I normally agree with real Clark, but this time, as hard as it is for me to say, I'm with Greeny. Now, I don't know why it's hard to say that, um, but 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 forgetting that, and I wasn't really disagreeing. I, Ryan Clark and I were actually more on the same side. If right. you heard the conversation we first had about this earlier, but the point of it is this, and, and I don't want to get off on to, to this tangent today because we have a million other things to right. do, but here's the bottom line. You and he had viewed the thing differently. You heard it differently. You talked about it. We got we 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 didn't necessarily convince you two didn't convince each other that the other was wrong, but you listened to each other and may, maybe on some small level, you know, we all learn something, whatever it may be, hear something a little differently than you normally do, see something a little differently than you normally do, and we get on with our day. Yep. And no one decides the other one is evil because of it. That's that wasn't to me. That was a pretty good way to spend five minutes. Well, that's a part of it, Greeny, when you can hear the other side. And I think it's important for everyone out there to listen today uh, in, in today's times. When there's a disagreement, the emotion becomes so involved that the reasoning becomes less and less. And I think when you can take the emotion out and have a logical conversation, it's the reason we're all different because we're going to hear things differently. We're going to see things differently, but it's very important to listen. And I think it's one of the skills that we don't talk about enough. And one of the skills that we don't do enough in our country is listening to one another and hearing the other sides, because it's the old, it's, it's just the same old phrase. A picture is worth a thousand words. So how you see it and which words are important to you are not going to be the same to me. So we'll just leave that there and we'll get on to other things. But I, I personally thought it was a great conversation and I hope that people enjoyed it. And if it made you think about things a little differently, terrific. And if it didn't, that's fine, too. Mike and Mike presented by Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Speaking of coaches and the, the unique way that they sometimes mm-hmm. speak, I have a couple of different examples of that. So I got three that I like. Okay. They're all college football coaches, but they're all dealing with entirely different things. Now, I want to give Herbie credit. Kirk Herbstreit was on with us a week ago. Mm-hmm. You were hosting with me. Yeah. And he said, looking ahead to a weekend that didn't have what appeared to be any great games on the schedule, he said, I guarantee you, some team is going to lose a game and we're going to turn around and we're going to say, how in the world did they lose that? Because it is so hard to be ready to play every single week, especially amongst people as young as these players are, not to believe your press clippings, Mm -hmm. not to overlook an opponent. And sure enough, we wake up and it felt like every big team lost this weekend, um, beginning with Clemson on uh, Friday night against Syracuse. So anyway, that was pretty good stuff. I have some reaction to that. I want to start with Saban. This is Nick Saban, because with that thought in mind, he talked about what it's like to keep winning week after week after week, and he doubled down on his little analogy with rat poison. Not to belabor or beat a dead horse, but the rat poison that we talked about, the external factors that are out there that talks about what you all talk about, like they got all these problems, so, you know, it should be we just show up and flip the coin and, I don't know why we would even play the game. What people don't really understand is it's not the human condition to be that way. The human condition for everybody is to survive. All right, that's, that's how we all got here. That's how we all started. That's how we, what we all want to do. To get a group of people to be special all the time in every situation with all the noise and external factors and all the stuff that's out there, it's a real challenge. A really interesting thought, and it, it, it is a much bigger picture thought than just football and just motivation week to week. But it is an interesting concept about the natural human reaction to take the ease that the path of less resistance, not necessarily least resistance, but less resistance when it is available, and how difficult it is to make people force people against their normal instinct to not do that. And if there's one thing you give that guy credit for more than anything else, maybe more than everything else, it's that he does that probably better than anyone. There's no doubt, Greeny. Think about us. You know, I'm almost 40. You're almost 50. Or you're not 50. I just turned 50. Okay, yeah. You're 50, okay? How hard is it for us to be consistent day in and day out with how we think and how we look at things through our eyes? Now, imagine doing that at 18 or 20. I used to dislike sports psychologist, especially when it comes to golf with Bob Rotella and all those guys. I love Bob Rotella, but yeah, go ahead. I, I, get, I used to do I'm like, why does a golfer need somebody to make them visualize? But now you understand, because from an athlete's standpoint, the mentality at which you approach 
not only the sport, but every day in that sport matters. Now, put yourself in a situation where you're 18 to 22, where you're thinking about your girlfriend, you're thinking about class, you're thinking about finals, you're thinking about the NFL, all these different things, and you're still not emotionally stable at that age. And so I think Nick Saban does a fabulous job at understanding where his team is, where their maturity is, and where their age is. He does a fabulous job at the psyche of controlling that with his team. The flip side of that, of course, this past weekend was Mike Leach and Washington State, who <laughs> were unbeaten and then got blown out. Now, I haven't heard this, but you were the one who told me yesterday yes. we have to play Mike Leach. This is good. Here was Leach after his team got blown out. They're terrible. They're terrible. What game did you watch? The defense had to play for eight minutes the, the first half, and Cal scored whatever points they did. And then the running back over there, they treated him like an all-star when we're down the stride. No, the defense did not play a good game. Somewhere where you're, you're searching for a bright spot, there's no bright spot. We're pathetic. You know, we're a bunch of pathetic front runners. What do you make of that? So there's a coach who's aggravated and frustrated, and, you know, we talk about giving a guy a pass or not giving a guy a pass. Do you have a problem with the coach calling his own players pathetic? No, because you juxtapose that to the game that they won uh, when they beat, I believe it was USC. Yeah. Big game, and Woodstock, and everybody's getting naked, and he's calling all these different things. So that's Mike Leach. I understand what he's doing. He's probably He probably went too far that night, and he probably went too far – uh, after this loss, but that's who he is. Mike Leach is that type of coach. Is the reason they love him up there in Portman, Washington. Now, there are some people that took offense to the fact that they thought that he was pointing the finger at his team. I heard him say we a couple of times, but people looked at his tone and said, yeah, coach, you were involved in that. You didn't make any adjustments, and your team was getting beat, so you're at fault also. I like what he said because I know who Mike Leach is. I've heard him for years, but some people took offense to that. Mike and Mike presented by Progressive Insurance, our guests on the Shell Penzoil performance line. And just to leave this little rip here with a smile on your face, that brought us to Ed Orgeron. Where are they going this weekend again? Uh, Oxford. Are they going to Oxford? And he used to coach at Ole Miss back in the day. And so they asked him about that, about going back to Oxford. And, you know, because he's at Orgeron, this was what he said. You know, I used to stop at the uh, Exxon and get a chicken on a stick. And it was fantastic. And I hope that cook is still there. I can stop and say hello to her. That's about all I remember. This is in Oxford? Or yeah. At Exxon? Chicken on a stick. How, how, it was, it was good, phenomenal. It's good. Good chicken on a stick. The best I ever had. Uh, uh, I'm not better raise the case. <laughs> <laughs> now, just to put some context, raising canes is in Baton Rouge, so he had to throw that last little bit in there because he's in Baton Rouge right now. Did did I did at the beginning of that he say he would go to an Exxon? Yes, an Exxon. So gas he's get, yes, I I'm, I know what an Exxon is. Well, I just make sure. Sometimes you don't know these. My point is, he's getting chicken on a stick from a gas station. Yeah. Is that a common thing that I'm not aware of? Greenies. Do most people go and listen? I'll have. Let me. Can you check the oil and 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 I'll get a full tank of gas. And do you have that chicken on a stick? Because I've heard it comes highly okay. recommended. Okay. Have you have you ever been to a Wawa? Uh, in Philadelphia, a gas station. Uh, yeah. I mean, in Philly, they have the Wawas, right? Yes. So they they're like uh, they are famous stores. for their sandwiches. Yes, true. A Wawa sandwiches. So you can. And so they you frequently can, are attached to a gas station, right? Yeah. yeah. So you okay. can go to a gas station in Exxon or Wawa, and you can get decent food. It's pretty good, actually. Okay. So so okay. So fair enough. So we'll go down if we go to this game. Let's just why don't, why don't you and me we go to this game? You and LSU. You're all yeah. excited about that. We'll, we'll go down there. Passes. We'll go to Oxford. We'll get ourselves some sideline passes, whatever it is. We'll watch the game, and then when it's over, we'll go over to the gas station, and it'll be a terrific way to kill two birds with one stone. We'll both fill the car up with gas, so we can return it all yes. full to the rental yes. place, and we'll get some chicken on a stick. Yes, we can, sounds delightful. We can do that, but we'll get it started though. In a few minutes, because these ribs, I'm, I'm hearing in my ear that the ribs are on the way. The okay. sauce is on the way. And Greeny, they aren't bringing, they, the ribs are here. And there are no forks, there are no knives, and there are no napkins. And Mike Greenberg, look at me, look me in the eye. You're going to eat this. You will eat this with your hands, and you will lick said finger. Hey, girl, have you done something new with your scales? Using new moisturizer? Nice. It really brings out the hazel in your eyes. Oh, hold on. Are you using whitening strips, too? Your fangs look good, girl. Really good. A really charming snake charmer? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. Wait, what? Have you been doing Pilates, too? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Very quickly, because I don't want to take a lot of time on this, but I told you that my, my trainer, Alex Shafiro, the guy that I work out with, 
his his passion in life is that he, he travels around the country competing in these barbecue competitions, yes. and he's very good. And he loves you, Booger. And so he made all this food, and he had me bring it in so that you could try it. So we've got ribs, and we've yes. got pulled pork here. Yes. And oh. so how does that look to you? It looks outstanding. Yeah. Pulled pork on the right, ribs on the left. So it's go like, ahead. You enjoy some of that. This is what you do. You take the rib. Yeah. Notice my finger. Yeah. And you tell me mm. how that is. My goodness. He, he's won, like, multiple competitions, Green. state titles and national Green. stuff. I think he finished seventh in the country in something. It, 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 is it good? It looks like it fell mm. off the bone. So when they it's say there. it might fall off the bone, it literally fell off the now, bone. Now, it's your turn. I need a fork. Here How you do go. you eat this without a fork? You cannot eat pulled Look. pork without a Green. fork. It's like a, it's like a moving. W- watch. All right. All right. I'm going to eat it. All right. For crying out. Get a rib. There you go. This is my love for Alex. Get a rib, Green. He is a good guy. I got a rib here. All right. Yeah. Can you do play-by-play for the rib? Yeah, I can do it. Greeny's now taking a bite of said rib. Oh. There's barbecue sauce on his, that really on his is beard right delicious. now. That is very good. But these ribs are good. They're, they fall off the bone. Yeah. What are you doing right now? I'm, I'm, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a tweet. Oh, okay, something. go ahead. We're, we're doing a sports show. We don't have to. We can I'm, continue eating. I'm sure everyone's fascinated yeah. by our eating these ribs. But I have a couple of ones that are interesting, and I'll be curious to hear your response to them while you're enjoying this food. Um, Randy tweets, if in that very same game, the Green Bay-Minnesota game, where we heard Mike McCarthy complain about the hit Mm -hmm. on Aaron Rodgers. If Clay Matthews has exactly the same hit on Case Keenum and McCarthy was asked about it afterwards, he would respond, that's football, right? Do we agree with that? Who cares right now? (laughs) We've lost Booger. We've lost, but see, I wanted to do this after the show because now we've lost Mm -hmm. Booger's ability to focus on on the conversation. Would you say, yeah, Case Keenum is good. Right, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> let, me read you. Right, let me try one more here. Fusion XA tweets, I know you're joking, Greeny, with the red jerseys, but seriously, at what point is it too much and it's no longer the football that the consumers will enjoy? Which is the bigger danger? That we take too much physicality out of the game and fans miss that, uh-huh. or that we lose too many star players and fans miss them. I mean, we're down Odell. Right. We're down Aaron Rodgers. I'm not suggesting that Dalvin Cook is a star on that level, but he's a fun, exciting young player, and we're down him. We're down J.J. Watt, who is probably the best-known right. defensive player in the sport. Correct. We've lost a lot of stars. I'll give you a little I don't want one. I, napkin I got, here. No, you don't need that either. People watch football green because of the physicality. I don't think we're... Yeah, we don't like to see our stars hurt, but there are a lot of people that watch football, not only for the star quarterbacks, but because of the, the innate danger and physicality of the game, because they can't do that. They can't imagine running into a brick wall, hitting somebody. But that's what football players do every single time they play. And there are people that go out and they turn their TV on looking for that. Why are you standing at the rib like This that? is really delicious, it by is. the way. Um, but what I will say, it's very hard to eat it and carry on this conversation. But what I will say about that is, that I think there is an increasing audience right now, particularly younger people, who did not get start watching the game because of the big hits, because they've been legislating them out for most right. of their conscious life, and who are into it for the fantasy aspect of it. I would say, people ask me all the time, how has the business changed in all the years I've been doing it? I've been doing this show 18 years. I've been covering sports for 30 years. Right. There are quite a few significant changes. Right. Technology is the biggest the number of female fans who are in, invested in the game and interested in the game is, this, is the next biggest. And then the third biggest is fantasy sports have yeah. changed everything. Young people, if I would say if I get 10, if, if, if people see me in the street, hey, Greeny, and they throw some question at me, nine out of 10 of them are fantasy related. Nine out of 10 of them are, hey, which quarterback should I play? Or, or you know, so, they're all fantasy sports, and that doesn't have anything to do with how hard anybody's hitting anybody. Which do you think people could, could, could do without as far as as football the big hits or star quarterbacks getting hurt. I think the big hits I think people could do without the big hits more than they could do without the fantasy element of it in general the fantasy element of the sport in general I I, I think I have no data to support this but my own individual perspective is that we have arrived at a point now and if not we're getting close that people are more yeah. interested in football for the fantasy element of it than they are even rooting for their own team. Fantasy's big now, and it took me a while to get into it, but I'm now in the fantasy, playing fantasy football. I didn't realize just how much it's consumed. And what fantasy's done that I didn't realize, it's brought the casual fan in. It's brought the female fan who never watched football. It it's brought, brought a in. ton of people yeah. who otherwise weren't paying attention. Yes. That's the point that I'm making. Yeah. And those people don't miss the big hits because they never cared about them in the first place. Yes. Steven Jackson's on his way in to talk basketball. Season starts tonight. The food is delicious. Mark, Back in a moment. Wow.